The iPad Pro dominates the tablet market and there's nothing really that comes close. Even that 10.2 inch iPad is better than some of the Android tablets you can pick up at the moment. But as much as you think that you know everything that your iPad Pro can do, there's always these small little hidden gems that just come out of nowhere which make using the iPad even better. And I feel like I need to pass on this knowledge, this wisdom of stuff that you can do on your iPad Pro. So then next time you go to your iPad, you can use it in different ways than you're already using it at the moment and just make it better. The first trick that I wanna show you is how you can use YouTube with picture in picture. I'm sure you've seen by now that iOS 14 is coming really soon as well as iPad OS 14. And I get asked this question more than any question that I get asked at all is whether the picture in picture mode works with YouTube and it doesn't but it kind of does as well at the same time. So if you're actually gonna use the YouTube app and you wanna use picture in picture on the iPad, it doesn't work. You can still listen to the videos in the background if you've got YouTube Premium. And if you wanna know how to get a really cheap version of YouTube Premium, have a look in the top corner now and there's a link to a video that will tell you how to do that. But if you wanna just use picture in picture on normal YouTube on the app, it doesn't work. But there is a bit of a simple, really easy hack that you can do that can actually let you use picture in picture with YouTube. So the first thing that you need to do is go to Safari. Okay, so when you get to YouTube, you then need to change it from the mobile version to the desktop version. So in the top corner of that address bar, you can see those two A's, click that button. Then you'll get that little drop down menu, just click show desktop version, find the video that you wanna watch, then just swipe up to go home, and there you go, you have picture in picture working on your iPad Pro for YouTube. It works really well, you can resize it, you can move it around the screen, and it means you can just do what you wanna do, but still be watching YouTube videos. The next thing is something that really irritates me, and it is that the iPad Pro doesn't have swipe to type. If you're using your iPhone and you've got iOS 13, you probably know that you can swipe around the screen on that little text box and you can type what you want without actually typing with that swipe to type. I'm not sure the official name that Apple calls it, but we'll call it swipe to type. And it actually is really handy, especially on iPhones, because it makes your big phones like this 11 Pro Max easier to use with one hand. And this isn't enabled on the iPad by default on the full size keyboard, and it should be, because it'd make it really easy to just type anything that you need to type with one hand. There is a little way around it, and I'm not sure that everybody knows about it, but if you're on that full screen keyboard, the big wide one, all you need to do is pinch in and it will make the keyboard a lot smaller. And once that keyboard is smaller, you can then use that swipe to type feature that iPhones have had for the last year or so. And you can move that keyboard around the screen wherever you wanna move it, but it still makes it a lot easier to start typing with one hand. And the keyboard is probably a little bit too small. It'd be nice if you could resize it just a little bit, but the swipe to type then works really well on iPad. The next thing is more of a Mac slash iPhone slash iPad trick, but it is something that you need to know. If if you're on your iPhone or you're on your Mac and you're scrolling through an article or you see something that you want to try and copy over to your iPad, the only way that I knew to do this was to maybe airdrop the link to your iPad and then you'd have to go through and scroll and find that photo or find that bit of text that you wanted to copy and paste into a document. But there was a much easier way to do it. I only found out about this a couple of days ago and it makes that multitasking between one device like your iPhone to your iPad a lot easier. All you need to do is make sure that your iCloud is logged into the same thing. So make sure your Mac, your iPhone, your iPad, whatever is all logged into the same account. And then this is how the trick can work. So if you're on that article on your iPhone and you think it would go really well in a document that you're writing on your iPad, all you need to do is highlight that bit of text and copy it and then head over to your iPad and then just long press on the screen and it will come up with those options that you can copy, cut, paste, hit paste and it'll take the stuff that you've copied from your iPhone or your Mac over to your iPad. And it works the same way, like flipped around as well. So if you're on your iPad and you copy something and it's gonna go really well into a document or article that you're writing on your Mac, you can then just copy it on your iPad, paste it on your Mac, and it works with both your photos and that text. Okay, the next thing that I'm gonna talk about is Apple Maps. And I don't think people realize how good Apple Maps can be on the iPad. 
Loads of people aren't keen on Apple Maps because Google Maps just do things better. But over the past couple of months, Apple Maps has got really good and especially good on the iPad. It also gives you a bit of a hack to be able to tell the weather as well because you might already know, but the iPad does not have a weather app. I think the first thing to do when using this app is go into your settings and go to the preferences of the app and change it to how you want it. So if you want directions, get rid of driving because it gives you that by default. And if you only use public transport or walk, set that as your preferred method. Method. And then when you're also in that settings, if you scroll down near the bottom, you can see two little tags called air quality and weather conditions. And if you turn them on, when you zoom into a certain part of the map on Apple Map, in that bottom right hand corner, you can see a little weather symbol that is at the bottom. If you long press on that weather symbol, it then starts to give you what the weather is for that location. And it's not the best version of what a weather app might be, but it's a little bit of a hack that you can use because the iPad doesn't have a weather app. The other thing though that I think is really cool with Apple Maps is you have this feature called Flyover and it works a little bit with AR and what you can do is you can move your iPad around and you can see what that place is like. So if it's somewhere you want to go and visit and you want to make sure there's maybe, I don't know, like parking around or whatever or how far something is from a train station, you can physically see how far away that is. You also can tour what you've searched for as well. So if you go in and search Manchester, you can take a flyover tour of Manchester or London or New York or wherever it is you're searching. And it will take you to places of interest and show you where they are. And it's really cool if you're planning on going somewhere, it gives you a bit of an idea of where it is, what it does and what happens there. And I found it weirdly to be quite relaxing. So I've just been watching it and being taken these virtual tours of random cities, even in the UK. It's even more handy now, considering you can't go anywhere in the world. This kind of takes you on holiday a bit. Well, there are some tips and tricks for the iPad. So hopefully you've seen something in this video that you didn't know before. If you enjoyed the video, then why not sub to the channel? Because if you do, that would be amazing. If you want to follow me on any of the socials as well, the link to them is in the description below. And until next time, See you later.